Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. I see a lot of familiar faces, and I see a lot of new faces, too. And for those who I haven't met yet, my name is Kevin Carroll, and I have the privilege of serving as the 21st Dean of All Saints Cathedral. When we look at Scripture, when we look right at the very first chapter, the very first book, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we read, And then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And I think one thing that strikes me as we kind of live into our lives as Christians, into our lives in the Jewish tradition, is what does it mean to be made in the image and likeness of God? How does that affect us? I think it affects us sort of by what we're doing here today. God is the ultimate creator of everything that is beautiful and joyful and wonderful in this world. And when we participate in the arts, when we create music, when we do a painting, when we make a sculpture, when we participate in drama, we are creating something that is beautiful and wonderful. And in that way, we are reflecting the image and likeness of God back out into the world. So I think having beautiful music in a beautiful cathedral is sort of what we're called to do. So I hope you sit back and enjoy our concert this afternoon. I hope you follow up and join us for the reception afterwards. And I am going to sit down and I'm going to call Lee Erickson, our cathedral organist, to start things off. Thank you, Father Kevin, and welcome to all of you. The organ has undergone a little bit of work. Uh, the last rebuild was in 1999, and since then it has had 14 additions and a lot of tonal work done to it. So today is kind of the kickoff of this redone organ. And if you want a real Reader's Digest version of, of the history of the organs in this church, the very first organ, I just saw a picture a few months ago, uh, some of the parishioners were down in the archives, and when this was Olivet Congregational Church, there was a three-manual tracker organ upstairs, and we do not know who built that, so that's something to check into. Uh, I, with the next organ was a Wangren organ, probably in the 1920s, it was up here, and the console was over here, and that organ at some point was moved to the balcony, and in 1966, the Teller's Organ Company built the 20, 28, 29 rank organ that was here. It was a two manual organ. The console was upstairs. And that served the parish until 1999 when um, the organ was totally re-leathered and uh, redone, refurbished. And a new three manual console was brought downstairs. That is this console. And, um, the organ was that way for a long time, and, and, and then now recently it had these additions and some tonal work. Not to mention that it has a new computerized relay. Thank you, Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, our first performer this afternoon is Marilyn Lemoness Schrader. And Marilyn, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're playing and where you've been playing and what's going on. I've been playing at St. Luke's Episcopal in Bayview for 41 years now. Yeah, that's a little bit of time. Um, prior to that, I was at Kingo Lutheran for 10 years. So anyway, I've been around and before that, I grew up in a Dutch Reformed church, so I've, I've, I've been around. and I figure most organists are very ecumenical. And the piece I selected today is by Jacques Nicole's Lemoness. We figured um, he spelled his name incorrectly. He has, did, didn't have the last E in it. But anyway, we figure maybe somewhere down the line we might be related since we figured the, my family came from the Netherlands, but we figure the name Lemoness maybe came when the French Huguenots left France, and they probably left France and went to Belgium too. And he was a very prolific organist and also teacher of many important people, including Vidor. Oh. Yeah. 
And yes, the piece I'm playing is called a sortie, which means going out piece. So please don't leave right after I play, okay? <laughs> I'm going to turn the MC duties over to Marilyn. We've known each other for years, and uh, Marilyn has a way with words. And hopefully, we did want this to be sort of an entertaining occasion, not just another organ recital, you know. So, so we're not worried about everything being just so. It's okay if it's a little loose and a little this and a little of that. And if you laugh here and there, that's all right, too. That's kind of what we were hoping. So Marilyn, I'm turning the MC duties over to you. Thank you, Lee. Next on the program we have Scott Rydell, who's been around Milwaukee for a few years. He grew up in the Sherman Park area, and you grew up and played then at the church you grew up in, which was, I believe, Sherman Park Lutheran? And how many years were you there? 34. Use your mic. 34. <laughs> wow. After you left there, you went to Christ Church, where you've been for how many years now? 19 now. 19. And I understand that you're going to be retiring from there soon. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Pretty okay. soon. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> okay. I, I understand, but 
Uh, I keep going at St. Luke's. They won't let me go for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, the piece you're going to play is by Bergman. You want to this tell us a little bit about this composer, please? Pardon me? About the person you're playing. Sure, yeah. The composer is Arthur Bergman, who was the organist at my home church, Sherman Park Lutheran, for also 34 years, but he started in 1923. So, and uh, he was also the vice president of the Wangren Organ Company that had built an organ in the cathedral at one time. Um, we were sort of Episcopal-style Lutherans in that <laughs> ours was the only church in town that had the choir sitting in front in Anglican-style stalls, so they used to call us Luther Palians. <laughs> <laughs> So Professor Bergman was there for uh, 34 years. He composed quite a number of pieces. What I'm going to play for you today is a beautiful little lullaby called Arioso that just about everyone had him play for their wedding, as I understand. I'm playing from a photocopy I got in 1970 of his original handwritten piece. It's a little hard to read, so excuse me. <laughs>
Thank you, Scott. That was lovely and very relaxing. I think I saw a few people nodding off. That's okay. <laughs> Just like church. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Tom. That's okay. Looks like a big book there. And now we have Tom Kester, who was at Trinity Church Wabatosa for a while. But I understand you have returned back to your home roots where you started in Milwaukee, back at St. Peter and Paul. Am I correct? That's correct, yes. Yes. What goes around comes around, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Very a good. bad penny or something, they say, right? And, and how many years were you at St. Peter and Paul before? Uh, 19 years. Wow. Yes. Now you're back to finish, hopefully finish out your career, maybe? Probably. Probably, yes. <laughs> but you return because you kind of live on East Side, don't you? Uh, yes, I do. I okay. live in Shorewood, uh, my wife and I. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm also at, I should say, probably, um, uh, St. Peter and Paul, and also uh, Old St. Mary's downtown. So oh. um, the, the East Side Catholic parishes um, have a collaboration that's called, I think, Insolidum. Um, and so uh, there are five parishes, and in some of those parishes, there are even a smaller grouping of other churches, uh, like Three Holy Women. Mm -hmm. I think it says in the program that, uh, that I'm at Three Holy Women, and, and that's actually not correct. Um, the, the musician there was sort of dismayed to find that my name on, on that. But uh, anyway, I assured him that I wasn't taking his job, too. Uh, <laughs> um, Yes, so... Yeah, you never know, but you've been around town, too. You've been uh, in yeah. Wa Wa Waukesha for a while at Carroll College, right? Weren't you there for a while? Um, I, w I was there for, for some time, yes, yes. Uh, teaching at, at Carroll College. And, um, yes. Marquette, too? Also at Marquette in campus ministry as director of music. So, you, yes, you, you, you've hit all the bases. So, <laughs> you want to tell us about the pieces you're going to play today? Yes, uh, the first one is a fanfare uh, by uh, John Cook, and uh, it was written in 1951 for some big occasion, uh, which I don't recall. Uh, and uh, and um, I think that actually he wrote it as as a uh, piece for for band or um, and. But most organists know it as as the fanfare for organ. Um, in fact, I couldn't find any recordings online of of that piece as a, a band piece. But um, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful uh, piece for organ. John Cook was a British organist uh, who served in North America for some time. I think in Toronto and then on the East Coast uh, for quite a while. Um, so he was also had gotten around. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You wanna... Yes, sure. And then uh, following that, there is a uh, short piece by Louis Vierne, a uh, French organist uh, from the, the Romantic tradition, uh, was the organist at uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, and this is one of his uh, short pieces called Scherzetto. Uh, so, thank you.
wanting to dance. <laughs> and now we have David Barkey getting ready. David currently plays at St. Peter's Episcopal in West Dallas. And when he's ready, we'll talk to him. Hello, Thank David. You. Hello, Marilyn. Yes, I am the director of music and organist at St. Peter's Episcopal Church at 80th and Lincoln in West Dallas, the second Bayview of Milwaukee, becoming <laughs> the second Bayview of Milwaukee. But you do have a nice little pipe there, organ. We have a wonderful pipe organ. It's a historic and historic instrument yes. from 19th century by the Hinners Company. And it originally was purchased by St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. The original church was near Wauwatosa, north of Wauwatosa. And then when it, that building was no longer used and a mission congregation was built at 35th and Whit Lisbon, that organ moved over to that location, St. Andrew's in the city, the Red Door Church. And then when that mission church was closed by the diocese, it, the organ, was moved to St. Peter's. And many of the St. Peter's people who are there came with it from, from St. Andrew's as well as the people who were already at St. Peter's. Thank you for the history. So it's moved around. Yes. And you've been around the neighborhood a few times, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> Do you want and to tell I'm, us that of, of any of your past endeavors? Well, I have been, had wonderful experiences working for Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra as chorus manager and artist liaison. Um, I was at Trinity Episcopal Church in the 90s, and um, I've worked in United Church of Christ, and I'm involved here at the All Saints Cathedral, uh -huh. have been the entire time I've lived in Milwaukee since 1985. And some people ask me this question, and I say, I'm polyritual. <laughs> but at heart, an Episcopalian, a former Wisconsin Synod Lutheran boy. <laughs> And thank, you, and, and thank you to my uh, undergraduate organ professor for introducing me to the cathedral in the Diocese of Eau Claire, where I went to undergraduate school. Very good. Yes. Then we ought to tell us about the pieces you have selected to play today. Yes. And that experience was where I really encountered the English-Anglican tradition of music in the church. And the first piece I'm playing is by Herbert Howells who lived the very late uh, 19th century, well into the earliest 20th century. He wrote two hymn tunes, which are in the hymnal here, the Blue Book. You can look up his name in the Composer's Index and find them. One of them is Michael is the hymn tune, All My Hope on God is Founded. And Howells was a part of a group of composers of the early 20th century who were part of the English Romantic Music Renaissance. And Howells was very inspired by Renaissance composers. Tallis, 1600s, Byrd, into the early 1700s, and even 1500s. And the piece I'm going to play sounds very much like a Renaissance 17th, 16th century tune. Yet Howells put jazz idioms in this piece. And so does Mr. Bruns, who's the second one. And he was a violinist. He wrote only five organ pieces, mainly wrote string music, choral music. And um, he got interested in the organ. And we have some written records that he sat at the organ and maybe played his violin. And you'll hear like solo violin parts in this organ piece I'm going to play. 
and then you'll hear where the orchestra comes in. So I think he was thinking of like playing a concerto with an orchestra, which was a little bit ahead of his time, actually. Mm. Progressive. Both of these composers, very progressive in their era. Thank you, David. Thank you, Marilyn.
Thank you, David, for two delightful selections there. And now we have C. Christian Rich approaching the bench. I think he's going to play something that um, he might have composed himself. Am I correct there, Christian? Thank you, Lee. Okay. you're ready. Okay, and you are now currently at Christ Church, uh, St. Christopher's in River Hills. Excuse me. Yes, you could. I'm sure you have a voice that fills the entire cathedral. Yeah, turn it on for me, though. Yeah. There we go. I'll be your assistant. Thank you. <laughs> and your question? Bef before you were at uh, St. Christopher's, you were not too far from here at the Unitarian well, Church, right? Well, Unitarians for 25 years, yes. and, but uh, the main position was 36 years at Sacred Heart School of Theology um, out in Franklin. And uh, my schizophrenia is due to the fact that I played simultaneously for Catholics and Unitarians. <laughs> That'll do it, yes, yes. So now I'm with the Episcopalians, which is much more manageable. <laughs> yes, would you t tell us about the piece that you have written? For um, I am going to do one of my own compositions. Um, it's variations on the hymn tune Southwell, um, often sung to the text, Lord Jesus, think on me. Mm -hmm. When I was at the seminary, uh, I wanted to introduce this hymn and rather than have a rehearsal, my practice is to play pre-service music based upon the hymn, just to get it into their ears. And I searched my organ library and could not find uh, anything satisfactory to play. In fact, I couldn't find anything. Uh, since then, I mm -hmm. found a few things. So the first three, there's a theme, then three variations that are very quiet and intimate that reflect the text. And those three uh, variations had their beginning as improvisations. Uh, I basically, the night before, wrote out a few little ideas and sketches and took my chance. It was a 7.30 mass, so I figured they wouldn't be listening anyway. <laughs> um, and then afterwards, I was... Uh, pleased enough with it that I actually worked it a little bit more carefully and did some sketches for the fourth verse, which is the finale, a Takata, and um, packed it all away and only looked at the Takata this summer. So you're hearing the premiere of the Takata at the end where the variations had been, the other variations had been played before. Um, as I said, the hymn tune is very quiet and reflective, very personable. Lord Jesus, think on me. Usually at liturgy, it's the plural. Hmm? And uh, so these reflected, and uh, I'm trying to show off the, some of the quiet stops on the organ in the first three variations. So we have the theme, three variations, of which the first one is actually a lullaby. And I get a little rocking motion going there. <laughs> and uh, at the end, you can determine if the kid falls asleep. 
And if you fall asleep, uh, the Takata will wake you up. <laughs> um, those of you that are familiar with this hymn will realize that I repeat the final two phrases. Uh, this tune is a short metered hymn. And just to give it a little bit more length and allow for more possibilities composition-wise, I've repeated the uh, last two phrases of the uh, hymn. So these are four variations, theme with four variations on the hymn tune Southwell.
Thank you, Christian, for the de very delightful theme and variations on Southwell. And next we have Michael Betcho with us from St. Mark's on the east side. Oh, he's tearing it apart, okay. Well, he's a little taller than most of us. So. I hope you'll be steady now. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yes, and before you went to St. Mark's, you were many years at the cathedral across town here. Correct. I was at St. John's for 26 years. Wow, very good. And you put on many a fine program there, especially your Wednesday the series. The Wednesday concerts, yeah, I was very proud of that. We started the Wednesday concerts um, in 2002, right after the cathedral uh, dedication, uh, renovation and dedication um, uh, was completed. We started that, that series. In, mm -hmm. yeah. It was very nice. Very Thank nice. you. Thank you. And how, how long have you been at St. Mark's? Not too long. I've been at St. Mark's just about a year. I left the cathedral in May of 2021, and then I was at St. Jude's in Wauwatosa for okay. an interim year. And then I started at St. Mark's last September. Okay. And you want to tell us a little bit about the piece that you're going to be playing for us today? Sure. The, uh, the first piece, the pair by uh, Yongen, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good melody. Good. And um, I, I think the, the melody of this piece is absolutely beautiful. The score I've had since I was an undergrad many, many, many years ago and I learned this piece, it was about 10 years ago. I, read, I wasn't really quite ready for it when I was in my uh, early 20s, but uh, while I was at the cathedral with the two organs we have there, this, um, uh, they lended itself well to this piece, so I learned it then. It's um, just a beautiful melody, uh, highly chromatic, lush, absolutely, as I uh, would tell uh, people, it's just like smooth as butter.
Thank you, Michael. That just goes to prove once again that you can't rely on the relay of computer science anymore. And now as Lee moves uh, back to normal height, Is the memory going to work for you, Lee? Okay. And last but not least, we have the Lee, who is organist here at All Saints Cathedral now. Of course, he's been around uh, the city quite a bit, too. You played at St. Anthony's at Ninth and Mitch for how many years? 35 years. Yes, okay. And then you were also, at the same time, director of the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra Chorus. Yes, that was 22 years plus a whole lot of assistant conductor before that. Yes, yes. M <laughs> Margaret Hawkins did you well. Right, yes. You yes. did. Okay, we're so happy that you were here finally at All Saints. And would you want to tell us a little bit about the pieces you have selected today? Yes, I'm going to play pieces um, that the first two I'm playing are rather quiet. Um, the first one from uh, Dan Locklear set of pieces called Rubrics um, is uh, the piece may be exchanged. And I was introduced to this piece by Joseph Kucharski, who was organist here for many years. And um, it's, it's an American piece. Dan Locklear is still alive. Most of the music played sometimes at concerts is what Margaret used to call music by dead people. <laughs> this person's still alive. And um, it features as a solo stop uh, the Swell Diapason, which is a new stop. We spoke before that we added 14 sets of pipes. These sets of pipes were not ordered new. These sets of pipes were rescued from other organs that were being dismantled or done away with. And there are a lot of wonderful sets of organ pipes out there that are in danger <laughs> right now, just as churches are in danger. So um, what I did was manage to rescue certain pipes. We have pipes here from St. James on the Avenue, um, and we have pipes in this organ from the convent on Lake Drive and uh, any number of other places. I won't get into it all now, but anyway, it's quite eclectic. And it's a wonderful way of using these wonderful pipes, um, and it's a whole lot cheaper than buying them new. <laughs> so that, that is the way we were able to do this. So anyway, I'm playing uh, uh, The Piece May Be Exchanged by Dan Locklear. The solo is on a diapason. I'm not sure where it came from. I got it out of some sort of dumpster dive somewhere. <laughs> and I think it came from a church up north somewhere. Um, and it's accompanied on some rather mellow stops. There's a stop that makes it undulate, as they say, and that undulating stop comes from St. James on Wisconsin Avenue. So I'll talk about the next piece after I play this piece.
The next piece I'm going to play is a Bach choral prelude. I thought, well, we can't have an organ recital without something by Bach. So I've always enjoyed this piece. I, learned, I heard of it first when I was a kid listening to records, you know, the kind that went around on a turntable. And I think uh, uh, the Duraflays made a recording at the National Shrine or something. Anyway, this piece uh, caught my attention because it just seems so very different. Um, it's a chorale prelude. The melody is in the right hand, played on the Vox Humana stop, which is a new stop to this organ. The Vox Humana are the reed pipes. Um, and it comes from the convent organ on Lake Drive. And <laughs> um, I will play the chorale it's based on, um, the, the translation of the title, Herr Gott nun schleus den Himmel auf, uh, Lord God, now open wide your heaven, because here I come. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of a, <laughs> a somber yet hopeful, uh, peaceful kind of piece.
Thank you. And the final piece of the day is based on the theme of Handel. Lift up your heads, lift up your heads, O ye gates from Messiah. Or, if you're a singer, Caro mio ben, te tri mio ben. I don't know which is first, which came first, who stole from who or whatever. Anyway, uh, Alexandre Guillemont, a noted French organist and recitalist of the late 19th century, early 20th century, wrote this piece based on that little tune fragment. And it starts with a rather lush little chorale. And then it has a middle sort of fugal, playful section. And then it ends with a glorious statement on full organ. I'm going to use one of the stops on the organ that hasn't been used so far, not because Gilman called for it, but I thought it would be fun to kind of throw it in anyway. So you're going to get to hear the Zimbelstern during the Gilman. Now go figure on that for anybody that knows anything about organ stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so, and if you're wondering what the Zimbelstern is, it's a little bell star. It's right in the center above the great pipes up there. I'll turn it on. I'm giving away all the fun here. In German organs, there was a star that went around. That's why it was a Zimbelstern. Okay. People like that.
Um, before we leave and go have some refreshments, uh, I just want to thank so many people that made this possible today, starting with Father Kevin for his support and encouragement in all of this, our sexton, John Seaman, for helping to move this thing around, which isn't the easiest thing in the world, to Eric Nelson, who did our graphic work on the program and helped with publicity, to Peter Minix, who's been running the video and audio recording, to the ushers that showed up today to help us get in and out of this place and where the bathrooms are, um, all the people that have donated food for the reception, and John Krill, who's in charge with the reception and the hospitality, um, and so on. And most of all, I want to thank David Barkey, who did a ton of work to make sure that this would happen. Um, He's the guy that put it all together and made sure everybody did what they should do to make it happen. So, um, that being said, I want to once again thank all of the performers today. Would you please stand? All of the performers. It was very nice of them to give up their time to, you know, come over here and practice and get something ready and do all of this besides all their other things. So we're really grateful for that. So now, uh, thanks again for coming. And please join us for refreshments through those doors and straight to You Can't Go Anymore. And you'll find the food. Thank you very much. <laughs>